What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10s. Today we are working on a 2017 Tracker Grizzly 1448. Now someone has done some modifications to this boat already. I'm not too sure about this guys. I'm going to show you these and let you guys judge it for yourself, but uh, it's not his prettiest work. I can guarantee you that. Anyways guys, I got Austin back with me today. We're going to crush this thing. We are on a paper chase right now trying to get this money while we can. I'm trying to get some of these projects pumped out. We're going to be doing a full build with this. We're going to try to get all of the metal work done, the framing, and all the hatches and everything in here in the live well for stage one. Then we're going to come back and we're going to end up doing some electrical plumbing and turfing this thing eventually, maybe even painting it. I don't know. we got to see what this guy's budget is. I'm going to turn this camera around give you all a quick run through of the boat the way it sits now. Tell you what we plan to do with it. You guys know how this works. Let's get back to work. So the boat itself is a 2017. Now he's got some nav lights installed up here and he's got some of these spotlights on here. Well, these are right in the way of the trolling motor. So we're gonna have to do away with those and change that up. We'll worry about that a little bit later, but it's got a steel trailer. Boat's kind of dirty. It's got some water and it. it's been raining outside, but not a big deal. The hole looks like it's in pretty good shape. He does have a bunch of seat bases and his posts up inside of there. And this console, this is mine. I'm probably going to put this in here. This is actually built for a well-built boat, but um, it looks like it might work in here. Being this is only a 14-foot boat, doesn't have a lot of space in here. It's going to be tight quarters. The guy wants to have a fully tricked out build, and we're kind of limited on what we can do because the stupid console takes up half of the floor space in here. And he does have a brand new outboard. Everything that's going into the boat itself is brand new. That brings us into this back bench. Now, this is a humongous hatch that's in here. I don't even think it's attached. I think it's just sitting in here because these are the holes you attach it with here and there's no fasteners in there. But this thing is gigantic. It's gotta be at least 60 by 20 inches. This is made by r, &R Design. Not a bad hatch. It's just got a couple of flaws with it that I don't like the way the back is not bent. It's flush. And then those attachments for that come through this top right here. So if you turn over that, you're not going to be able to get in there and tighten those up at a later date if they get loose. With a hatch this size, chances of it getting loose are um, pretty good. So we're going to take this out. We're going to be putting two hatches in here and then a center base for his seat. Um, at least they dug all this foam out of here. Really didn't want to have to mess with that. But we do have to finish off this floor with the tracker kit. And we'll have our hatches going in here. That gets us into the most interesting point of the entire rig. Back here, they decided that they wanted to cut access panels up inside of here to dig this foam out, which is fine. Great idea. But why the hell would you take a piece of 3 16 aluminum plate and try to weld it solid your first day on the job? I just don't understand. They didn't even try to weld the bottom. By the time they got down there, they were like, fuck it. I've already uh, had enough of this and just let it alone. But it looks like pure dog trash, and now I've got to try to figure out how I'm going to make this look good again. So we're just going to take this off. I mean, what I normally do is just make a panel that goes over this, a flat sheet, 16th of an inch, a couple of screws or rivets in there, and that way it's removable. It makes a lot of sense because you need to get up in there to run the hose out for the bilge pump. And if you want to pull wires up to the side of this bench in the back, that's the perfect way. These should just be removable. It's really overkill. and. Honestly, it just makes a lot more work for us, but I'm gonna have to fix this up. We'll get to that when we get to it. So we're gonna get this console staged up. That's about where it's gonna go. And we're gonna start figuring out all of our framework in here. Now, the main thing he wants to have is a live well because he wants to turn him a fish. So I'm thinking that we're gonna put the live well somewhere in the center in this area right here. In front of that, we'll incorporate another hatch. That hatch will also give access to this front face panel compartment up there because he's got some good storage in there. That side over there, we're gonna have some type of electrical panel hatch, and then hopefully we can come back and have enough room on this side to throw in a small skinny hatch that you could have for some tackle storage up in the front of this boat. Let's get right into it, guys.
the front deck framing is done. This is basically the tracker kit. I went on a tracker hiatus where I built like four different trackers in a row. And this is the kit that I was trying to come up with for the front deck. I never actually released this kit. It's something I am gonna put a little bit more time into though, because this is really cool. This gives you the ability to buy this, basically the outside frame and tell me how you want the inside chopped up. Now this one's gonna have four hatches, one on the port and starboard, and then a live well and another storage hatch here with access up into that front panel. It's very similar to the last kit build that I did, except we're running a long hatch on this side over here. Now I'm gonna get this thing taken out of here, flip it over on the table. Austin's gonna weld this thing out solid. Then we're gonna get on to figuring out the internals for this. I gotta build this live well box. Let's get back to work. All right, so we're about five hours into the build now. We did have both of these back frames. Austin built both of these, they're 20 by 20s. In the center section right here, we're gonna have to blank this off and throw a base in there for a seat. The console is 16 inches of space in there. It's not much room, but honestly, it's only a 14 foot boat. I mean, it's too small for a side console, in my opinion. I couldn't talk the customer out of it because he's got a brand new Suzuki outboard that's set up for controls. He wants to have a console. So that's what we're doing. And the seat is gonna sit, you know, back to where it stops right here. So he's got a big seat. He should have enough room, even though it's gonna look a little funky because that seat's gonna stick up another four or five inches above here once it has the spring from the part that drops in. So it's gonna be tall, but it is what it is. We got the whole front deck frame completed. Hatches on either side. These are 12 by 24s. We went ahead and made it that size because we have some of these standard that were already made as far as the lids cut out. So I also made the tracks for these and then I bent these lids and he put the hinges on them. Now we've got two more hatches. They're gonna go in here. These are gonna be like 10 and 3 eighths by 25 and a half. And this live well is gonna come over to here and that's gonna basically have a sidewall right here that separates it. I'm gonna wrap the live well with one inch closed cell foam on either side. It's 13 inches this way and 30 inches that way. That's gonna give us right at about 19 gallons full size and probably about 17 with his fill that it's actually gonna be filled up to. So it's pretty good size. Should be able to keep his fish alive. I did go ahead and cut out this hole so I can get down to the floor, run the drain, and run his fill pump. And that side over there is gonna be the electrical panel. I might split it up in half. I don't know, I might just make the whole thing his electrical panel, because he's gonna end up adding a bunch of stuff in here. And then he would have room up underneath here, so he could put his live scope black box up underneath there and hide it. But we'll see how it works out. Not too bad though, for the first five hours into this build. We're gonna pick up tomorrow, right where we left off today. Let's get back to work. All right, so Austin is making a couple more hatches and I'm building the live well. Now you can see I drew this live well out. This picture is what it's gonna look like once it's bent up. Then I'm gonna have two side pieces that I'm gonna implant into it. And this picture down here is basically what it looks like with the layout. So I got my bends laid out, my hole for my drain. And this piece of metal, I've already cut it. Got my marks on here, how I'm gonna bend this thing up. And this is my center hole for my drain right here. Now the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put a little cross panel before I start bending this up, basically from this back corner to the center of this hole. I'm just gonna hit it just from there out in the break. Same thing on that side. I might do one here. This is gonna be close though, it's offset. It's only gonna be like three and a half. See that second mark right there? That is basically where this is gonna bend up. So the center of that is only three and a half inches away from the front. You can see how it's laid out in the drawing. It's closer right there. The reason for that is because there's a floor rib that runs right here where I would normally put this in the center. So 
we're not gonna be able to put the drain right in the center. We're gonna offset it right there. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing bent up, but that's how I do it. I cross panel it in the flat. You can hang this out the end of the brake right here. You know, they can come into here, let this end hang out. A little push down here, just a tad. Just give it a little crease to help that water drain into the center. You'll see exactly what it looks like when I get done. I'm gonna put you guys back up on the hyperlapse and get this thing bent up. All right, so there it is. You see how those bends look now, the little cross panels. In the center, I got a dimple die where I can punch a hole in the center and then recess it, just like the sink drain in your house. We've got a fitting that's gonna go in there, make this thing look nice and cool. And then on these sides, I'm gonna bend these as one piece up and come over an inch and a half here. Then we'll weld this thing solid, check it for leaks, put this thing in the boat. Let's get back to work. All right, so Austin's about to weld out the live well, and I'm going to address the water that's in here. This thing's been sitting all night, and this water's not going anywhere. It's not gonna come out of there. It's got these god-awful dog shit welds over here. My God, look at that. Woo! Boy, that's top five right there. So what I think I'm gonna attempt, I'm gonna cut these out. I'm gonna run a cutting wheel across here, remove these big thick plates out of here, and then I'm just gonna take and cut this back across here. Now there's a rib right here. Can't quite feel which way it's running. I think it's going that way, but I'm not sure. But I'm gonna cut this out over here. I gotta put a bilge pump down in here anyway, so I'm gonna have to have some access. And I'm hoping what I can do is once I get this slot cut out, I can get in here with a drill and drill some holes through these ribs that are right here and that water will drain back out. Come out the back, we'll see. Let's get back to work. So this is why it's not draining. It's got a big block of saturated foam right there. And now look, shake the boat. You can see all that water on that side. And on this side, you just got a bunch of dry leaves. I'm gonna remove all of this and I'm gonna take my drill and try to drill some holes up through both of these pieces right here. And hopefully that water will be able to get into here. Let's get back to work. All right, so basically what we're doing with this back deck is we're installing one of the kits that I sell. It's the bench kit. It comes with the two 20 by 20 hatches. We got our frames made for our spacing. Obviously we don't have the lids on them yet, but this one's a little bit different because this boat already had a big cutout for that gigantic hatch in here. So we're gonna have to frame the front of this out right here and put a seat in there. But these panels right here, this is part of the kit. This is what comes with it. And these go inside of here to finish off the space on the side. 
just like that. We'll shoot some rivets in there and that will finish off inside of this back bench and give them tons of storage in here. We'll get this stuff going guys. Let's get back to work. So we got this back transom area figured out in that last video you just saw. Now it's a little bit different because the way that I normally sell these rear transom kits, this piece right here is bent down on this side back here. And that's what keeps it sturdy and strong back here. And then usually would come here and bend down two inches. And then you could just attach it with rivets into the side piece right here. Well, since this guy decided to cut this out and he really butchered the whole thing. He cut it up so tall that I had to add this piece of inch and a half, inch and a half, one eighth angle in here. I did the same thing on the other side. And that is basically riveted up through here. It comes down through the top of the existing pod piece that's in here. And then this piece, I added on top of that and ran it back. It's another piece of the same inch and a half, inch and a half, one eighth angle. And that basically just gave us a platform to install this piece to and we welded it here and here and then all the way across this transom awesome put some killer welds on there and we welded it here and here and here so this thing is very strong sturdy this is made out of 0.125 aluminum and way that worked out is pretty cool i mean it's best case scenario we always fly by the seat of our pants when we're doing builds especially builds like this that other people have already chopped and screwed so this piece is basically a leveler piece that brings it from here up flush so now when we run all of our turf in here the turf will come all the way flush back to this point right here the way i'm going to do this since the transom drops down lower than the existing back bench seat we can't run this hatch all the way out to the back my transom kits normally would come so from this point right here across to the point right there we're going to run our hatch. We're gonna leave like a two and a half, three inch gap in here all the way across. It's not a big deal. We'll just frame this out with some angle and then I've already got the hatch made, it's gonna drop in here. So this will just have like a gap in here. It'll be open and he can run his cables in here for his outboard because it's gonna hook up to the batteries and stuff and his gas line's gonna come in here, his gas tank's gonna be in here. So it'll be fine. And this back transom hatch is still gonna look good all the turf will be streamlined. He'll just have a little splash well back here to finish it off. Now I do have to come back and cut some of this stuff out of here because I got to hook up his bilge pump. I'm going to set that right here and I'm going to run the hose for that up underneath of this and out of here. So that way when we put a cover sheet over this that will cover all this up and the side panel, you won't see any of the hoses run for the bilge pump in there. 
And then on this side, this is our main drain for the live well. And I got to hook that up too. And then I'll run another cover sheet over this and a cover panel over this. Rivet it in. That way we can hook up all these electronics and all the wires will be hidden. Now that all this is figured out though, I want to go ahead and hook this live well up. That live well is like the main component on finishing everything up in this front deck. And I have everything I need to do that. So what I'm going to do is run a pump right here. You see, I went ahead and cut out the floor in this side panel and dug all this foam out. If you guys think that these side panels are not holding water in this foam that's way up here on the side, well, you're sadly mistaken because all of this foam inside of here was very wet. Now, I'm not going to cut out this whole side panel and dig all this foam out of here. But the little bit that I did have to dig out, it was wet. So what I'm going to do is install a pump in here as low as I can get it. That's going to be his main fill for the live well. Then I'm going to have another pump. It's basically going to come from the bottom of this live well back up to the top. That's going to be his recirculate. I'm going to try to go ahead and get these pumps installed because his electrical panel has to be right over this. I already have the switches and the fuse block for that. And then I'm going to get all this stuff finished up and figured out, guys. Let's get on to it. so the live well is wrapped you see i put this hvac tape around here and it does have a one inch closed cell foam around the entire live well now this is my switch panel hatch it's gonna have storage on one side i'm gonna split this off i just wanted to drop all these hatches in here so i can see exactly how everything's gonna go stage it up and i'm gonna put my drain tubes in here i need to figure out which corner i'm gonna put all these drain tubes in and get all this stuff ready so i can take this to the shop tomorrow i can get austin to finish up these hatches but the live well is completely wrapped. The only thing I gotta do is come back and wrap this side right here. I'm gonna do that before I install this electrical panel switch permanently. But inside of here, where I wrapped all this, I'm gonna come back with another sheet of aluminum, like a 040, it's super thin, super lightweight. And I'm just gonna wrap this. That way this stuff is not only enclosed and it'll keep it cooler, but it's gonna make this strong. I put a sheet of aluminum over this so stuff doesn't bang into this and tear into that. Plus we'll be able to paint it. So it's gonna look a whole lot better once I get all the sheeting around that. Now that this whole front deck is kind of figured out, I'm gonna get on to this back deck back here. I got one more thing I wanna do back here before I take this boat back to the shop. And this is the back transom area kit. Now this kit, obviously I showed you how we had to make this work for what we had to deal with, but this hash right here, it's a little bit long. So I'm gonna cut this off at a 45, keep that same angle. Same thing on this side. It's pretty sweet though, when you open it up, it's gonna be a nice hatch. That's basically the gap we're gonna have back here, and that's just like a splash well. So I'm gonna get this hatch out of the way. And inside of here, I gotta cut these pieces out. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now tonight, and figure out how I'm gonna set this bilge pump in here and get that hooked up and ran. And then I'm pretty much gonna be finished up with what I can do here. All right, so check it out. In the last hyperlapse video, I was doing some cutting over here. Now I'm using a six inch cutting wheel on a grinder. These things are extremely dangerous. I've been using this type of wheel for 23 years, so I'm very comfortable with it. But how I did this is simple. This is something you can do. If you've got one of these tractor grizzlies, whether it's a 1448, 1648, 1752, 1860, it doesn't really matter. 
all of them are framed out and set up pretty much the same way in this transom area. Now, obviously, you're going to have to cut all this floor out around here to dig this foam out of here. But if you want to run a bilge pump in here and have your hose up underneath of this floor concealed, this is how I do it. I mean, it's pretty simple. So across here, this is a tube. You can see it on this side. That's my tube right there. Now this piece right here is a channel. It runs up around the top of this and down the side. Same thing over here. There's another channel, it's inverted, facing the opposite direction. It runs across here and down and back to the floor. Now, these are welded solid. You gotta put your holes in here for drainage. But what I did is just cut through this. Now I cut all the way across here. Once I could see where that tube was at, I just wanted to cut it out on both sides. That way it would make it like a trough. You can see, that's a channel, it's a trough. That's perfect for me to run the hose for the bilge pump in here. So what I'm gonna do is install the bilge pump here. I'm gonna make it a little bracket or something that comes here and, and you'll rip it into this, come down and over. I'm just gonna bend that in a handbrake and then I'll attach the bilge pump to that with the hose facing this direction. That hose can lay right in here. because This is like an inch and a half deep. The hose is only one inch. It'll lay right here, run up the side, 90 degree elbow fitting, through hole out the side of the boat. Then once we get that figured out, all we gotta do is cut another sheet and just lay it across here. We left a lip here. You gotta leave at least half an inch and this side doesn't really matter. I'm gonna grind this off flush. This is like a steel rivet that's in here. These things are bullshit anyway, but we're just gonna cut a sheet, lay over this, a couple rivets here, a couple rivets in here and finish this off. Same thing with the sheet here. When you open it, it's gonna look nice and clean and all of the hoses are gonna be up underneath here. We're probably gonna come back and run a couple of wires through here and back up into the other side. Those are gonna be for the LED strip lights we're gonna put underneath the rails at a later date. But once you cut that trough out, it's the perfect place for you to pass wires and your bilge pump hose through there. It's pretty simple, guys. Now they got all this figured out, I'm gonna make a little bracket for this bilge pump and try to get this thing in the boat. Let's get back to work. So I got the bilge pump installed on the bracket. I went ahead and ran the wire for that. Pulled that up through where the electrical panel switch is gonna be. I pulled another wire through, so I got an extra wire. And I still got my fish cable wire right here. I put this sheet on top of this to finish this off. This side is done, except for the cover plate that's gonna go over this. That's just gonna have some screws in it. So you can remove that if you need to. But the hose for the bilge pump comes right up the side and comes right out here. So that's the way you wanna do this. Now this is how this is gonna look inside of here when you open it. Everything's nice and clean. I cannot finish off this side yet. I'm still waiting for the through hole fitting for this inch and eight pipe right here. That's gonna run right out the back. That's for the main drain. So I'm gonna hold off on that. I'll put that in when it gets here. What I'm gonna do now though, is I'm gonna run a piece of inch and a half, inch and a half, one eighth angle across here. And that's basically gonna be the support for the back side of this big hatch. I'm probably gonna have to trim down the inch and a half flange that sits on this back hatch because I wanna butt it up right here. And also have the 20 by 20 hatches that's coming in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut like a half inch off of each of those. That way I only have a one inch flange. This is two inches right here. It should work out perfectly. I don't have to cut it all the way down on these hatches. I can just do it where they're gonna meet right here, but uh, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. But I do wanna go ahead and finish up the back of this area right here. And I'm not gonna install these hatches permanently until I get the gas pistons on them and I send them off to the powder coaters. But I wanna get all this framework figured out. Then we're gonna get on up into this electrical panel up here. I gotta finish wrapping that live well with some aluminum. I brought that home with me also. And then I'll build the panel for that and get all this stuff wrapped up, guys. Let's get back to work.
All right, so I only got a couple things left to do in the rig, but the back deck turned out sick, man. I mean, you can see the way I did this back hatch. I just cut into this a little bit. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to use the existing bench to catch this flange right here. If I were to come off of that bench and out with an inch and a half angle all the way across here, we're gonna lose another inch and a half out of our opening size inside of this back hatch. And we can't afford to do that. You need to be able to fit your gas tank and stuff in there. So it worked out well the way I did that. Now this back transom kit is a little bit different. I will take measurements on this. And if you're interested in doing this in your 1448 and you have the short transom on it, it might work for you. You're gonna have to make some alterations. These pieces are definitely gonna have to be cut down and the hatch might even have to be cut a little bit. But that's all stuff that I'm gonna take notes on so I know what size these are if you're interested in getting something like that for your rig. Now that I got this thing to this point, Obviously, we got to figure out where the seat's going to go. Now, we got a side console in here. At first, I thought it was kind of stupid because it takes up a lot of room. It's a double-edged sword. It's also pretty cool, though. This is a 14-foot boat with a side console in it. Never seen one of those before. So I got to figure out how we're going to put these seats in here. I guess he could just sit on this bench, which is what I would recommend because those seats are humongous and you'd be a little bit lower sitting on this bench. I think it's going to be a little bit tall with this console, but by using the 20 by 20 hatch, we can take this thing and flip it and have it open this way, which I think is what I'm going to do because I got to put one of these seat bases in here for his seat to sit in. So I've already took this seat and took some measurements on it. I put the little post on the bottom just to figure out the distance that this thing sits from the front of the seat, the center line. So now I can take the seat, I'm gonna put it over there, I'm gonna sit in it and kind of gauge up the way I think it should be. And then I know this thing's gonna come back 10 inches and obviously it's centered that way. I'm probably gonna come off the side of the hole at least six inches. That way he has room for his shifter and his throttle cable and stuff to go in there and run to the back of the boat. I'm gonna get these things in here. I did finish painting the electrical panel Turned out good. I still gotta put all the grommets in there and hook up the switches and fuses with all the wires. I'm gonna do that in just a second, but I'm gonna get this done, that done, and then I'm putting a recessed foot pedal tray up here in the front of this boat. And then we're gonna clean this thing up and I'll circle back with you guys to finish up this project. Let's get back to work. It's a wrap for stage one of this build. Recess foot pedal tray in there. Front deck finished up. Looks real good. Console is just sitting there. We're gonna take that out and adjust that and everything. But I did get the back deck finished up, figured out. Seats mounted in there. And those seats are on the post, obviously. So he can pull these out and he can put them in these center brackets here and up front once he gets to his fishing spot. Pretty cool though, man. Just waiting on the one fitting back here to wrap everything up in this build and the metal work. And then he's gonna get this thing painted. It's a really cool 1448 though. It's gonna be a speed demon. Electrical panel. I only hooked up the two switches that are for the live well pumps. Come back and hook the rest of that up later. Good size storage next to that. 
the storage hatch, access to the front, live well. Cool build, man. Definitely a quick little hit for a cool project. And you guys are gonna see this one on the channel again very shortly. This guy's got a lot of stuff going into this build. He's got big dreams. All right, so another video is in the wraps, guys. I know this video got kind of long, but I didn't want to chop it up. I really just wanted to go ahead and run all this stuff into the boat the way it's sitting now in one video. So it's a good long video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Help me grow the channel, guys. I do appreciate your support. I can't do anything on YouTube without your help. Bottom line, if you're looking to help me out, go check out my merchandise. I got some hats, shirts, t-shirts, sweatshirts, koozies. That's on trick10s.net. If you want any products as far as hatches or anything like that goes, go check out my website, tricktinsjombos.com. If there's something on there you're interested in, shoot me an email at professionalwelding at gmail, and I will be glad to help you guys out. It's a pretty cool little build, though. It's going to be different to drive a 1448 with a side console, but he's got a nice jack plate going on this thing, and he does have a brand new 20 horsepower Suzuki. So I'm looking forward to taking this thing on a little spin. Plus, it's going to be fun to drive, having a steering wheel and a side console. I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like, subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Let's get back to work.